Hello, my name is Christina and I'm the Australian Biocommons Training and Communications Manager. I'm pleased to be able to tell you about the Australian Biocommons activities around outreach, collaboration and skills development. I'm also going to tell you how we've done it despite ongoing lockdowns and time zone clashes. As we start this session, we acknowledge the traditional owners and their custodianship of the lands on which we meet today. I'm on Wurundjeri land. We pay our respects to the ancestors and their descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country. This beautiful example of stone walled fish traps and aquaculture ponds are part of the World Heritage listed site of the Budgebim cultural landscape. The, these weirs, channels and lakes and the surrounding lands were managed by the Gunjid Mara people for six millennia. It's been recognised as the world's most extensive and oldest aquaculture system, and we're lucky to have it just outside of Melbourne. We recognise that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples have long-standing scientific knowledge traditions. These scientific methods have been transmitted across generations and contribute to ways of knowing the world that are unique and complementary to Western scientific knowledge. In this presentation, you'll hear how we engage with researchers through Biocommons training programs to deliver on the Biocommons mission to build digital capability for life science communities. Under the guidance of Jeff Christensen, Melissa Burke and I work across training and communications for the Biocommons. We integrate these two areas as part of our outreach to find researchers we can assist, whether that is through raising awareness of best practice or great activities they should participate in, or through direct upskilling in a new skill, in a new tool or technique, uh, or helping them to access existing platforms or resources, or indeed onboarding uh, researchers to new services delivered by Biocommons projects. This is an absolutely collaborative activity. And we collaborate with research institutes, universities, service providers, research consortia, funding bodies, professional associations. You'll hear about some examples of, it, of many of those in this session. Basically, if someone has a great idea or sought after experience or a tool worth sharing, we work with them uh, to support them to deliver great training for Australian researchers. We lower the barrier for experts in the community to step up and train. We guide them towards the best possible training outcomes and connect them with a willing audience for great results. We're so pleased that a couple of our collaborators have agreed to talk about their experience of the Biocommons training program today. Deanna Devison from the Monash Bioinformatics Platform and Celia van Gelder from the Dutch Tech Centre for Life Sciences and Elixir Netherlands have been kind enough to join us here today. You'll hear from them soon. Biocommons brings together a network of volunteer trainers and facilitators and supports them to deliver and um, develop engaging training. They're most often drawn from across Australia, but increasingly we have international involvement in our training offerings. In pandemic times, the focus has really been on organising online workshops and webinars. But before lockdowns, we spent a few years refining a method of delivering training to researchers that we called a hybrid method. I'm hesitant to use the term now because hybrid means many different things to different people these days. But nonetheless, we were offering training simultaneously to groups all over the country. They were meeting in person with local facilitators that we had pre-trained. We were connecting them live with expert trainers who could be anywhere in the world, but still offering high levels of interactivity in a very scalable way. Those events were training over 150 people across multiple sites, and they all had trained facilitators and heaps of inter interactivity. We published this method earlier this year in PLOS Computational Biology and the link uh, here at the bottom of the screen will take you there if you're interested. We wanted uh, the paper to be a nice practical case study into how we ran these large dispersed interactive events. So we included things like checklists for event organisation uh, with the hope that others might be able to use it for their own training. It's been viewed over 1.4 thousand times, so we like to think that people are finding it useful. 
we're really keen to get back to this form of training as we know that online training will always be uh, an important um, uh, factor for our dispersed audience. We've also seen great growth in a lot of communication activities that play a part in the training program. Our audiences across all platforms are growing. We know that we get a lot of registrations from Twitter campaigns with more than 1,000 followers. We're really pleased with the uptake and engagement of our monthly newsletter. We're getting about 2,000 new views per month on YouTube and a steady increase in subscribers, which is about um, 1.3,000 at the moment. And we have a Zenodo registry for documentation and reports and publications, plus a newer training materials repository. And we're getting really uh, great engagement with those as well. So to give you a taste of the webinars that we offer, here is a list of the last 10 topics we've run. It's a mixed bag. Uh, we cover beginners through to more advanced topics. And we often showcase uh, bioinformatics tools or platforms. And we recently did a series of getting started with blank. Um, we invite locals and internationals to present, and they can be about really highly specialized topics or general overviews. We've received feedback from the community that they like to attend our webinars to keep up to date with what's going on in the bioinformatics world. Since BioCommons got started in February 2020, we've offered 32 webinars. The webinars are broadcast live and we get good engagement with our live events. Recordings are shared on YouTube and we accumulate high views of recordings afterwards. Lots of our videos have clocked thousands of views now and our most popular recording with uh, Professor Michael Charleston from the University of Tasmania has over 10,000 views. In addition to the shorter webinars that have limited interactivity, we also have a program of hands-on workshops. We've worked with a wonderful range of researchers and, and trainers in lots of different ways. Some come to us ready to go, looking for an entree into a particular Australian life science community. Other colleagues need a lot of support as they've never trained people before, but they're full of enthusiasm and don't really know where to start. We've also coordinated the local contribution to a few of the massive asynchronous uh, galaxy training events, bringing in content and hands-on support for what's required in our time zone to make uh, existing training opportunities truly global. We particularly enjoy working with academics who have specialist topics that they would like to share with a relatively targeted audience. An example of that is uh, we were able to assist the Genomics for Australian Plants Consortium to deliver very technical content over a series of events, advising them on the development of their materials, offering some of the logistics support and the background organisation and administration and bringing national exposure to their work. So with workshops, our focus is again, very much a collaboration. And through our collaborative activities, BioCommons has gathered a community of over 100 volunteers who have helped us roll out our workshops. We're lucky in Australia to have lots of institutions that have excellent training programs of their own, but they're often uh, quite targeted to their own stakeholders. After the enthusiasm of our previous collaborative training activities, we approached a group of training professionals from the organisations uh, listed on this slide with the idea of participating in an informal cooperative that shared training events nationally. Each group puts forward a workshop and we collaborate to make it available to everyone at no cost. BioCommons does all of the organising and bringing people on board. Uh, we think this has been excellent, uh, but you don't have to believe me. I'm going to hand over now to Deanna to talk about her experiences with being part of our bioinformatics training cooperative. Thanks very much, Christina. As Christina said, uh, my name is Deanna Devson Lucas. I'm the Monash Bioinformatics Platform Manager. The Monash Bioinformatics Platform excuse me, provides bioinformatics and computational biology through data analysis and training for researchers at Monash University and our partners. Our platform is located on two sites. The majority of our team is based at the Clayton campus 
Um, and then we have two additional researchers based at the Central Clinical School at the Alfred Hospital. Our team is currently made up of nine members and we have quite diverse skills. So we have multiple members with computer science PhDs and multiple members with biological science PhDs. And everyone in our team is involved in training. Next slide, please. So we deliver our, um, we routinely deliver our training through the Monash Data Fluency Initiative. And these include workshops such as Intro to R, Intro to Python, and so on. Our goals are to empower researchers to develop skills, to know how to use, explore, interpret, and visualize data in a meaningful way. And working with the National Bioinformatics Training Cooperative helps us to work towards achieving this goal. Yep, next slide. So why do we find working with the training cooperative so appealing? It's allowed us to gain national exposure, allows us to build our network, and we get to know both other trainers and researchers around the country. It allows us to support the Australian bioinformatics community, allows us to gain experience teaching new material and provides exposure to other techniques helps us to deliver training locally that we would be unable to provide otherwise. And it means we don't have to reinvent the wheel and develop new course material in-house. It also lets us learn from the other trainers. So there are often trainers with considerable experience in an area that we can learn from as well when they answer questions or explain things, even if you're also a trainer yourself. Uh, the team from the bioinformatics platform has been involved in delivering a number of external biocommons training workshops and these have been led by the Melbourne bioinformatics team, QCIF and Pawsey Supercomputing Centre. Next slide please. So we recently delivered a workshop nationally through the Biocommons Training Cooperative, and it was working with genomic sequences and features in R with Bioconductor. So our, our platform usually runs this workshop quarterly locally, and it's aimed at intermediate R users. The platform provided the teaching material, the lead trainer, and four of the assistant trainers. The Australian Biocommons handled all the details of running the workshop. They did the advertising, helped review applicants to make sure we had the right people attend. They recruited an additional helper, administered the workshop itself and collected feedback afterwards. All we needed to do was turn up and demonstrate. And we found this to be a great opportunity to deliver a workshop nationally, especially with Biocommons coordinating the delivery. Next slide. So we had 70 applicants, and from this we had 47 attendees from 21 different organisations around Australia. And there's no way we would normally be able to target anywhere near this uh, diverse group of people if we weren't doing it um, without the Biocommons. So we found running the event through the training cooperative to be very easily especially uh, to be very easy, especially with Melissa coordinating the Zoom breakout sessions. It allowed the facilitators to focus on the course material and not have to worry about any technical issues. The breakout sessions were very positively reviewed and the participants really appreciated the opportunity to work through materials in small groups with their breakout room facilitator. We got great feedback from the participants. They really enjoyed the workshop and our uh, lead facilitator found it great being able to leave the management of the workshop up to the Biocommons. Overall, we found it very beneficial working with Biocommons and would happily participate in future workshops with the National Training Co-op, both delivered by us and helping to deliver external workshops. We found it's a great way to connect with each other nationally and allows us to provide diverse training locally. Thanks.
Thanks, Dee. It's so nice to hear your side of the story and to hear that you're getting lots of benefit out of the cooperative as well. So I'd now like to take the opportunity to talk about what we're doing in workshops a little in a little bit more detail and also about what we're doing with our training materials. The workshops that we are running within the Biocommons are a great way for people to come along and take a deeper dive into a particular topic and to get hands on with some of the tools, workflows and software that people are using. So you heard from Dee and from Christina some of those examples. Since the Biocommons began in February 2020, we've run 18 different workshops, both in the hybrid format and online. And we've had 442 attendees. As with the webinars, the workshop topics span the whole breadth of biology and we're also catering for different experience levels. So we're going from things like a kind of back to basics on particular topics and then looking at uh, how to analyse particular data sets or use particular software like Galaxy Australia are through to more advanced topics like using containers and workflows in their research. As Christina mentioned, the workshops are led by really enthusiastic, really friendly and really experienced trainers. And they spend a lot of time developing materials to, to use in their workshops. Next slide, please, Christina. And this brings us on to why we want to share and share the training materials and do that fairly. The workshops generate a really wide variety of training materials and in order to get the most out of these materials, but also to recognise the time and effort that the our trainers put into developing them, we want to make sure that they are shared publicly. We also want to do this because it's a way of giving back to the bioinformatics community and making those materials available for people to use and reuse, whether they be trainees or trainers. We want to do this in a way that is fair, in part because we've been involved in many discussions about making training materials fair within the bioinformatics training community, but also because the fair principles provide a framework for consistently sharing the materials. And a lot of this has been inspired by the 10 civil rules for making training materials fair, which we were fortunate enough to take a part in developing. Next slide, please, Christina. I'm now going to talk you through the process that we've gone through over the past year or so to figure out exactly how we were going to do this. I'm going to keep it a kind of high level overview today, but if you'd like to know more about how we did this. I gave a talk about this at eResearch a couple of weeks ago and the recording of that is up on the Australian Biocommons YouTube channel. So to begin with, we first needed to figure out what kind of materials we have, where they are and who owns them. And by reviewing and cataloging the materials, we were able to see that we have a huge variety of materials in from videos, slides, handouts, data and documents, and that these come in multiple formats. Well, we were also able to see that the materials are shared and there's lots of different ways that they are shared. Some of them are shared, for example, through Google Drive or through GitHub, and some are also shared on other people's websites as well. The materials can be owned by individual trainers, or by training communities like the Galaxy Training Network, or by organisations like the Pawsey Supercomputing Centre and also the Biocommons own some of them as well. With this in mind, we then wanted to figure out how fair the materials were already and what we could do to improve their fairness. To do this, we made use of uh, some fair data checker tools uh, in combination with the 10 simple rules to create a checklist that we could work through and figure out what we were already doing, what we could be doing and what we could improve on. Next slide, please. Through this process, we were really happy to see that we are already along the path, a little way along the path to fairness, as most of the materials are already shared and they do have pretty good metadata already. 
We were also able to identify a few uh, things that could easily be improved. For example, by linking all the materials and metadata together in one place, sharing all the materials and metadata in a public registry and uh, describing them consistently and including licenses and DOIs. This process was also really important for our decision making process and it helped us decide that we wanted to represent the materials on an event by event basis and that Christina and I as the biocommons training team would take on the responsibility of making sure that they were shared for every event. Next slide please. Having done this review process, we ended up with a wish list of what we needed for any the process that we were going to use. So it absolutely needed to be easy to use and not too time consuming. We wanted to make sure we were using a public repository or registry. We needed a method that would handle multiple types of materials, including those hosted elsewhere. And it needed to have a way of linking authors and acknowledging the ownership. We also wanted it to allow for rich and adaptable metadata and to have a process for assigning DOIs and licensing options, as well as reflecting the best practice and approaches that the bioinformatics training community at large was taking. Next slide, please. As Christina mentioned earlier, we have decided to launch a new Zenodo community that is focused on the training materials associated with Biocommons events. And we've put this into action and are now sharing our training materials in this way. So what we do is we create a Zenodo record for every event, and that is given a DOI. The trainers are recognized for their effort through their ORCID ID and are listed as authors on this. Um, within this record, we also upload three different files. There's the event metadata, which provides a detailed description of the event in a consistent format. There's the index of training materials, which lists all of the materials that were used in that workshop or webinar and tells you where to find them. If there are training materials that haven't already been shared somewhere else, we do upload them into this Sonoto record as well. If the particular workshop was using materials that are shared elsewhere, like those that are shared in the Galaxy Training Network, then what we do is we provide a URL and a link out to those in that index of materials. To help make this as findable as possible, we cross-link the Zenodo record for the event to the Biocommons website and also to Elixir's test platform. And in the future, we'll also be linking to the newly launched Dreza platform, which is a portal for finding digital research associated training and training materials in Australia. To help out with uh, making sure that we're doing this efficiently and consistently, we're also making use of Google Doc templates and Trello checklists too. Next slide, please. So to finish up, I wanted to share a few outcomes and lessons learned from this process towards making our materials fair. It's had a fantastically positive reception from trainers. They've been totally supportive of us sharing their materials on their behalf. And there's also been a lot of views and downloads of materials since we launched this just a couple of months ago and you saw the stats on that earlier. Next, we want to work through the back catalogue of events, and we're going to keep learning, adapting, and talking with the community uh, as we progress this over time. If you want to try this out for yourself, a couple of things that I learned through this process were that there's no one perfect way to share and verify your training materials, and that's perfectly okay. And talking to others was also extremely helpful. We were really fortunate that quite a lot of other people were also going through this process at the same time. And we were able to get together with them at events hosted by Goblet, the ARDC, Elixir, Syndica, and the ISMB ECCB conference to share ideas and opportunities. So that is all I have to share with you today about workshops and fair training. I'm now going to hand over to Celia, who's going to talk in a bit more detail about some of those collaborations and interactions we've had with Alexia. Thank you, Melissa. And thank you for the invitation uh, for me to tell you about the very nice collaboration that we have 
between Australia and the Elixir training platform. I've split my talk in two parts. I want to tell you a bit about Elixir training platform itself for those who are not so familiar with it. And then I want to give you some highlights from our collaboration. Next slide, please. So in, the tr in Elixir, uh, we have a training platform and our tagline is professional skills for managing and exploiting data. And we are in the process or have established a sustainable training infrastructure, which is actually supported and adopted by all the Elixir nodes, the 23 countries. And it is our goal to deliver a coherent, high quality and impactful training program, which is building on and complementing the things that are being done in those 23 countries. And the crucial group of people involved there is the training coordinators group. We have one training coordinator per country. We also have a training platform coordinator from the Elixir Hub, and we have a leading team for three people. So Fotis, Jessica, and myself. Next slide, please. We started in 2014 building this, of course, but if you look at 2021, this is kind of a summary where we are now, and this is a list of our key infrastructure elements. And I think it's really important for me to stress that this is both technical infrastructure, but I also call it the people infrastructure. We have had a lot of Elixir batch training events for researchers, developers, infrastructure operators, and trainers throughout the 23 countries. Uh, you see some statistics here since September 2015. And we were always focusing more on the bioinformatics uh, related topics. But since a few years, we have also started to include activities in data management and data stewardship training. We have a train the trainer program, which is consolidated. The materials are available for use and reuse. We are building a trainer pool and an instructor trainer pool. We have the training portal test. I will come back to that in a minute to tell you a bit more. We have what we call the training toolkit where we actually actively try to collect all our best practices, guidelines, et cetera. And I have two, a few examples here. We have a training metrics database uh, where we keep all the statistics of the events. And we also have implemented the quality and impact strategy. And if you're interested, you can see the publication uh, from 2020, I put a link here. And we're also working on e-learning solutions. Next slide, please. So TESS is the Elixir training portal. It is a registry. That means that it aggregates information about training events and materials. They all stay at their own website, but we register them in TESS. At the moment, there are 1,519 training materials in there. And we also have of course, upcoming events, it's a calendar chronologically, but there are also over 12,000 past events in TESS. And it's also linked to the Elixir RDM kit, which is a product uh, from the Converge project, which is about research data management support. We have more than 70 training content providers delivering of making sure that TESS is going to be filled. And this is not only Elixir nodes, and it's at the moment, the majority is scraped automatically, either via dedicated scrapers made by the test developer, but also already a bit through bioschemas. And that is also the mechanism that we really want to move towards to in the coming period. So besides Elixir nodes, we also have organizations like Carpentries, Galaxy, Praise, and of course, Amble ABR, also feeding their information into tests. We have test interest from other projects in the European Open Science Cloud, for instance, also for like research consortia, like the European Joint Project for Rare Diseases. And very recently, the threat test approach has been ad adopted by the Australian Research Data Commons. I will come back to that in a minute, but also by the e-infrastructure EGI and by PANOSC, which is an infrastructure for more physics and astronomy. We currently use the EDAM ontology, uh, and we're also in the process of implementing the new vocabulary terms for fair skills that is being, being, being developed. Next slide, please. So this slide is also my bridge to the, the highlights of our collaboration. From the beginning, we have always been working together globally with other partners and projects in the global training community. And this is not 
this is just a snapshot and I won't go into detail, but just to give you an, yeah, an insight in how we work. We are, and I have some highlights on the left. So we are actively working with Goblet. There is a collaboration agreement since 2015. Um, but most prominently, we were involved in organizing the education summit in May this year. Uh, we are actively participating in interest groups of the Research Data Alliance. We are, of course, also collaborating with Australian BioCommons. I will go into detail for that in a minute. We are actively involved in EOSC projects and activities. And also we were involved in the OECD report about building a digital, work, so with the digital workforce, which was published in 2020. Next slide, please. I want to give you a few highlights about how we are working together. And in the next session, Corinne Martin from The Hub will give you the details about the collaboration agreement and also how we collaborate on other areas. But for the training, I got these sentences from the collaboration agreement. So there is really a strong alignment in the work programs of Elix and the BioCommons in the areas such as, and then there is a list of 10 things, I think. But one of them is actually international collaboration and training and training materials on bioinformatics. So since September 2020, we have had regular monthly meetings with the Australian BioCommons training team and us as training platform uh, executive committee. And this is actually very informal, but very, very valuable and, and interesting. We exchange news. We can announce things to each other's community. We, we discuss opportunities to work together, and it has been very fruitful. The Australian BioCommons also started a training advisory group. And uh, from Europe, uh, we have two people involved. So Sarah Morgan from Amber EBI and myself, I am representing Elixir in their training advisory group. Next slide, please. So the first highlight I want to take you through is the FAIR training, and that very nicely bridges to what Melissa was just talking about. So in Elixir, we have a FAIR training focus group, and this focus group for us is not meant with people only within Elixir, but is open for people outside Elixir too. So you're very welcome to check in and get involved if you're interested. Two main activities in the group, training about FAIR data, and making training resources fair. Last year, we published the paper that Melissa already mentioned. So the link is here. And also there was a webinar about the paper. So if you do not want to read, but want to watch, then the webinar I think is also nice for you to go to. In 2021, there were many fair related events by the global uh, training community. And actually Melissa, presented an overview uh, of the ongoing work in the Goblet and annual general meeting in last October. And on the next slide, you can see what we had tried to do. So here you see the timeline of 2021. And then you see that throughout the year, there have been several events, workshops, presentations at conferences, hackathons organized and done by, by several groups and of many of us are involved in more than one of these entities. But together we try to build this knowledge about making training materials fair. And the purpose is that it's on the right. So we're all working towards raising awareness about fair training materials for new trainers, sharing best practices, talking about what went well and what is really a challenge and then coming to recommendations about how to make training fair and also, ultimately, we are also working on making a lesson or a recipe how to make training fair and a fair checklist. Next slide, please. The, the second highlight I want to touch upon is the train the trainer. So in Elixir, we have a very strong train the trainer program. The material I already talked about it in the beginning. We have consolidated training materials, a trainer community, an instructor community, and we are very happy to share this and there is interest from the Australian BioCommons. Uh, they also are interested in exploring uh, uh, doing such an, an activity in Australia. So they are going to attend uh, one of the upcoming Train the Trainer course. And yeah, we hope they will get inspired and uh, 
yeah, can learn from us and we could also assist them to rolling out this in Australia too. And I think also if you look a bit further, uh, we could also definitely think about co-organizing, co like in the collaborative approach that Christina described, dedicated workshops. We, I think maybe we need to make a global trainer pool and not only a European and an Australian. But this is thoughts for the future. And I think the regular meeting that we have every month or two months gives us this basis to, to, to get these kinds of processes working. Next slide, please. The third highlight I want to take you to is about the DRESA, the Digital Research Skills Australasia. So this is the little story how this all came to be, at least from my perspective. Um, uh, as Melissa said, or Christina, I don't remember who said it, but uh, the Australian bioinformatics training events were already registered in TESS since 2017, and Amble ABR also advocated the TESS use uh, throughout Australia. And then uh, we had in 2020, we had an, a meeting of the Biocommons Adv Training Advisory Group. And then again, it was discussed that a portal or a national training registry was something that was, would really be valuable. And at that moment, I think TESS came up again. And actually this was, yeah, what, what I did, I kind of talked a little bit about TESS, what it was, how it worked, how we did it. And I made a connection to the, with the TESS development team and the Australian team. And I think this was just one email from my side and, it, and it, it, it made such nice, very nice things possible. So all of the things happened, the developers got together, there were meetings in Australia, workshops, Melissa attended, I don't know, so many things happened. And what the, the status is now is that the developers work together on both sides, they share expertise, insights, uh, there is a technical test club where everybody that is working on the technical side is invited. And I think the, the result is brilliant. The Dreza portal was built and launched. So next slide, please. So what we did, uh, of course, we wanted to, to share this, this very good news. So Elixa made a news item, test goes down under. And uh, on the right, you see, you know it already, of course, this is the, the, the look and feel of the Dresa portal. And what I said to Christina in an email was that this was an excellent example of our successful collaboration in the global training landscape. We are definitely one community. And then she said, oh, that's such a nice quote. Let's put it in a news item. But I am not, I'm not kidding. I mean, this, I think if it was, this is an excellent example. And I also put on purpose the two-way street picture here. This is not about us having something and you taking it or you learning from us. Yes, of course you are, but we are also learning from you. And it is the two-way street thing that I think is so powerful and that, yeah, that has made this work. And I think it might be an example of many more things that, that we could, could do together. So I think I only have one slide left. And this is actually my whole message. Very simple maybe, but I, I, I think we cannot stress it enough. Training is really without borders. I, it is my experience that in the training community, people are very open, want to share, want to learn from each other. And of course, it's also, we know that we have so many researchers to train and it's, there are so many good things out there so if we try to combine them in in a good way there is so much to gain so we are one community and i also think together we can uh, yeah, have much more effect uh, yeah and i think this was uh, what i wanted to share with you and i'm happy to take any questions Thank you very much, Celia. That's uh, I absolutely agree. And I think that's a wonderful sentiment to close our sessions with. So um, thank you to Celia, Deanna and Melissa for sharing your insights today. We've got time for a few questions from the audience. I have got a question to start off with that I'm interested in hearing the global perspective uh, around um, the effect of lockdowns um, on each of our uh, respective training environments. Um, 
we have absolutely um, enjoyed the one of the silver linings for us has been that we have been uh, able to participate in a lot more international activities where we hear about how our challenges are shared challenges. We, the global community, um, are experiencing very similar things at the moment. So that's been wonderfully rewarding um, for us to participate in more of those online meetings, despite them being very late at night a lot of the time or very early in the morning for Celia as it is at the moment. So I'm interested to hear uh, how, if you've seen an increase in engagement in training over the last 18 months, two years, um, uh, and or how your training might have had to have changed um, to deal with lockdowns. Celia, do you want to go first? Yeah, I can. I can comment briefly. I think um, we all had to cope. It was what it was. So everybody started, uh, and I think uh, there are definitely good things. In this, as you said, it has allowed the, the training events and workshop the, to be far much more inclusive. Other people could join that maybe in the past could not join because it was too expensive to travel or things like that. I think method-wise, uh, the training community has learned a lot about yeah how to deliver this. And one, for instance, also in the Goblet community, which is the global training community of bioinformatics training, Yes, also uh, at the education summit one day was also uh, one team was sharing with each other what is the current knowledge about delivering training in this yeah, new situation. But I think we are still learning and it is really a challenge. And I think maybe the, 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 mo the, the most current challenge is I think now we want to go to hybrid, what we call hybrid event, but I agree with you, Christina, that it's a term that is maybe we need to define it better. Online is already very difficult, but hybrid having groups physically and in the combination with, with the online is I think yet another challenge. And I think, yeah, I'm also very interested in your approach to see uh, how you did that actually already uh, for a few years. Yeah, I think we are just coping and just learning and also, yeah, not afraid to try. The participants also know that that this is uh, yeah, learning by doing. But yeah, by now, I think we have gained some expertise in this. Thank you. Deanna, would you like to share your experience? Yeah, so I guess we fairly similarly went to wholly online training uh, early last year, once we were all in lockdown, the we found the advantages of that was we've got quite a number of campuses, and it meant that we'd be able to deliver one workshop across multiple campuses, including Malaysia as well. So it really opened up who we could train at the one time, um, and obviously we were all learning on our feet. So the best delivery method and how well you can translate what would normally be an in-person workshop to an online workshop. But um, we were able to do it fairly quickly and, and we've had very positive feedback with our online delivery. We are looking forward to uh, delivering workshops in person again though. <laughs> Great, thanks. Melissa, would you like to comment on the Biocommons experience? Sure. So as, as with just about everybody, we've also pivoted to entirely online. And I don't, I wouldn't say that the appetite for training has increased, but the appetite for training has changed. So we're seeing that people are much more willing now to sign up for a webinar and uh, come along to watch it live or to watch it after the fact as well. And we're also seeing that people are far more comfortable with joining a Zoom meeting. Now that we've we've had two years of running things online, we don't need to provide quite so many instructions anymore and people are interested and excited about trying new things as well. So it's been it's been both challenging but also an exciting time to be in the training space. I agree. It certainly kept us on our toes and we've learned a lot. <laughs> So um, for our guest speakers, I know 
that both of you are, um, we heard about how we collaborate together, but I know both of you collaborate um, heavily in um, other, um, with other groups. I'm um, thinking about um, data fluency, for example, um, and, or goblet at, at kind of different levels. Can you reflect a little um, for us on why you collaborate trainer to trainer? So we, we are spending an increasing amount of time, I think, on very um, purposefully collaborating trainer to trainer. Can you talk about why you might do that with other groups? So uh, for the bioinformatics platform, uh, data fluency essentially kind of rolled out of the platform and is a collaboration with the Monash Library. And it allowed us, we would, a lot of our time was taken up with the organisation of delivering the training. Um, and once we moved to, to the data fluency model, it, it is almost a little bit more like the biocommons. Someone else now organises it for us and we can turn up and deliver the training. And it also allowed um, additional trainers to be trained so that our workshops can be delivered more frequently than if it was just the bioinformatics platform delivering the work. Thanks. Celia? Yeah, maybe I can comment a little. Um, so I think it, it is mainly the investing in the community building that I think for us it's it's the main part of it to it I mean it's a bit black and white so not all trainers are sitting in a silo or something in their institute but to kind of get them on a higher level and get them communicating and many of them are also researchers but when they get together on conferences they talk about the research so to have a dedicated time and place to actually exchange things related to the training, I think that that is really good. And from that, if you build that community, then yeah, activities can follow. Uh, it is also sometimes, it, it is a challenge sometimes because yeah, people may not always have the time to spend in that because they have uh, yeah, like, in, for instance, you, you mentioned also Goblet. So this is kind of, are do, people are doing this, you know, on the side or as part of their job, but it's, it's hard sometimes to find the time for that. Um, yeah, this is, these are my first thoughts. Hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, we've certainly found it very rewarding to be linking up with so many groups. Uh, we've lots of different perspectives not only bioinformatics trainers but really um, leaning on the what other people have learned all around the world in related areas it's been really re rewarding over the last year or so to get much more involved yeah maybe i can add one thing i mean if you think about um like there there is much overarching work that you really would like to do on another level than an individual trainer it's for instance you know, working on the bioinformatics competencies like ICB has been leading, you, th things like that. And I think now also the fair trading material activities. Yeah, this is something we need to do on, on, a, on a, a bit higher level than the individual trainer. And for that, we need to bring them together. Mm -hmm. hmm. Excellent. Well, thank you very much again. Uh, that's all we have time for today. So um, I'll just finish off with this final slide and an invitation to please follow up if you have any lingering questions uh, or if you'd like to get more involved in the BioCommons training program. So thanks again to our guest speakers and thanks very much to our audience for listening.